XRP rippled to $127 soon because of this. U.S. Representative Brad Sherman recently advised the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, to go after crypto exchanges that supported Ripple's XRP token. However, in a recent interaction with Fox Business journalist, Eleanor Tourette Sherman made another claim against the token. Welcome to the Finance Up channel. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Do you think the analysts are right about XRP? Write the answers in the comments. Giving away 500 XRP at the end of the week. One random subscriber will receive XRP coins. Take a look at the instructions in the comments section. All you need to do is write the word XRP, watch the video to the end, to like and subscribe. Ripple and individual defendants Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson have filed their responses to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, objection to Judge Sarah Netburn's decision on William Hinman's documents. Recall that initially the SEC claimed that it could not hand over drafts of Hinman's speech because the documents are protected by the privilege of the deliberative process DPP. Judge Net Byrne rejected this argument. After the court's decision, the SEC also filed another motion, arguing that Hinman's documents are protected by attorney-client privilege. The Securities and Exchange Commission claimed that Hinman had received legal advice from the Commission's lawyers before drafting the speech. That motion was also rejected by Judge Net Byrne, who later criticized the SEC for its hypocritical tactics. As a result, Judge Net Byrne has already ordered these documents to be provided three times. Despite these rulings, the SEC still objects to the order, but to Judge Torres. According to the Commission, the court made a mistake in its decision. According to Ripple, the SEC wrongfully objects to the decision because it cannot show obvious errors in any of the decisions. The SEC actually acknowledges that Judge Net Byrne correctly understood the law on these issues by outlining the legal tests in almost identical terms and referring to the same authority. He disagrees only with the actual conclusions of the court and the natural conclusions from them, reads an excerpt from Ripple's response. Regarding Judge Net Byrne's decision on the SEC DPP's claims regarding Hinman's documents, Ripple stated that the verdict complies with the generally accepted law of the Second Circuit as applied to the record created by the SEC. The blockchain company and its executives also noted that Judge Net Byrne's decision on the sex claims regarding Hinman's documents corresponds to the direct application of the indisputable law to the actual records and affidavits submitted by both Hinman and the agency. In addition, Ripple criticized the SEC for changing what was said earlier as it considered it appropriate to prevent the transfer of drafts to the company. It is noteworthy that the SEC claimed that Hinman's speech in 2018 was his personal opinion and did not reflect any of its policies. However, a year later, the SEC made a U-turn, saying that the speech was a guide for market participants. Ripple has just published a new report on crypto trends in business. The report highlights a blockchain-based internet of values that transcends national borders and expands or replaces existing ways of doing business. According to Ripple, blockchain and cryptocurrency technologies, together with central bank digital currencies, CBDC, are expected to have a big impact on institutions. According to the report, by 2025, 76% of the world's financial institutions want to use cryptocurrency, provided that it is allowed by law. Various technologies, such as cryptocurrencies and NFT, are being implemented by enterprises, governments in various ways as new use cases become available. However, given the nascent state of these new technologies and the inability of many to fully understand the possibilities, as well as the lack of clear rules, the crypto industry is having difficulty overcoming these barriers to wider adoption. The Ripple Report pays tribute to NFT for the great consumer interest in cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Although this indicates that the user experience with NFT was not easy due to the infrastructure and design. According to Ripple and, more controversially from the point of view of cryptocurrency, CBDC will contribute to what has been done by cryptocurrencies and stablecoins, and thereby, set in motion the flywheel of the blockchain. However, the following statement in favor of cryptocurrencies does give a bold idea of the impact of tokens. There are hints that financial leaders of both financial institutions and businesses once again see tokens, including cryptocurrency, as an even more powerful force than the underlying blockchain technology that drives them. Following the general schemes of buying and selling tokens at their first launch, 
Ripple believes that in some cases this gives way to greater complexity and advanced programmability, which is now happening with NFT and CBDC. The widespread use of cryptocurrencies for payments is the most important factor that businesses and financial institutions should consider when deciding whether to include cryptocurrencies in their investment portfolio. The usefulness of cryptocurrencies as a kind of hedging is in second place, and the associated use of cryptocurrencies as an intermediate currency is in third place. Institutions see the greatest value in cryptocurrencies for portfolio management, including hedging, and mainly for payments. 70% of financial institutions surveyed for this study expressed interest in using blockchain technology for various types of payments. The wider use of technologies such as DeFi is still not being explored by most institutions. Huobi Japan announced in a press release that it decided to distribute Flare Network, FLR, tokens and Songbird, SGB, tokens to XRP holders. According to today's announcement, the exchange said that it will soon announce the date and time of the token distribution to its users. Beneficiaries of Flare Airdrop, FLR and SGB will be distributed to XRP holders who held XRP on their Huobi Japan account on the date of the snapshot, December 12, 2020, at exactly 9 o'clock, Japanese time. Tokens will be distributed among XRP holders who meet the requirements in a ratio of 1 to 1. For example, a Huobi user with 500 XRP at the time of the snapshot creation will receive 500 units of Flare and Songbird tokens when the distribution begins. Not all XRP holders will receive an airdrop. Huobi Japan noted that the XRP holder may be excluded from the FLR distribution even if his account is included in the snapshot. Some circumstances that may exclude some Huobi XRP traders from receiving FLR rewards include customers whose accounts were cancelled or frozen customers who made a trade during the snapshot, and customers whose deposits were not reflected during the snapshot. In addition, Huobi Japan has stated that it will not distribute FLR tokens to users allegedly involved in fraudulent practices. Flare Network Token Distribution The distribution of FLR and SGB tokens has been the main topic of discussion for more than a year. It is worth noting that airdrop is a method that the Flare Network team wants to use to distribute tokens of their ecosystem. The current price of XRP for today you can see yourself on the screens, and the trading volume for 24 hours is 1,294,436,065 US dollars. We are updating our XRP price in US dollars in real time. XRP has dropped 4.08% in the last 24 hours. Do you think XRP will be able to win the court and restore its former price? Write the answers in the comments. That's it for today. Thank you for watching this video to the end, if you liked it, then don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel.